Pipe Network presents The views and opinions of the host and the guests do not reflect the views and opinions of the institutions they belong to. Welcome sa isa na namang kwentuhan at balita ng mga pananaw tungkol sa life and everything that goes with it. Dito sa Kwentuhang Pilosopo with Sir Ice. Layunin ang show na ito na gawing bahagi ng pang-araw-araw na buhay ng karaniwang tao, ang gawain ng pagmumuni at pamimilosopiya. Kaya let's go mga peeps, it's Muni Muni time! If you want to experience more value in your next online shopping experience, then look no further. Use the promo code in the description down below to get up to 80% discount on your next Lazada purchase. Alright, magandang araw mga Philo Peeps. Ito na naman tayo. May bago tayong episode ngayon. At kung makikita nyo, kung nanonood kayo sa YouTube, itong kasama natin ngayon, isa sa mga pinagpipitagang media personality sa ating bansa. No? Napakaraming awards na tinanggap. No? And his name is of course synonymous with uh, you know, credibility no? and honor in his, in his field of, of work. No? So ang kasama natin ngayon, no? very proud, very honored, si Sir Howie Severino. Hi Sir, kamusta? Hoy, ang magandang araw sa iyo. Uh, malaking karangalan na nakumbina mo ako dito sa iyong uh, programa. Uh, Sir Ice, Sir no? Ice. Can I just say something first, Sir Ice? No? Yes, sir, of course. Uh, you know, philosophy professor ka, but you have a rapper's name, no? So, ah. so how cool is that, no? Sa saan galing ang palayaw mo? Saan galing ang palayaw? Ako, sir, napaka-uncool ng ng origin ng aking ng aking uh, nickname, no? Kasi nung high school, Uh, maga akong nahilig sa pag-inom. <laughs> Sabihin na natin gano'n. No? So hindi ah, talaga okay. ako moral <laughs> exemplar. No? At dahil doon, maga akong nagkaroon ng problema sa aking uh, digestive system. No? So tinutokso ako minsan ng mga kasama ko makaklasiko nung high school sa mga party na hindi ako minom. Tapos ako lang yung naglalagay kasi ng yelo sa mga baso nila. <laughs> so ang tawag nila sa akin, Iceman. Yan. Hanggang sa naging ice na lang. No? And it's stuck. No? So, yun, okay. yun yung napaka-unflattering origin. <laughs> so, nothing to do with coolness. Nothing to do with, you know, rapping. Well, It, yung or- origin yun. <laughs> pero yung dating nga is already cool. No? May pata- Ayan. May pata- Salamat, show sir. Cool <laughs> na, you know. uh, okay, I have, I, have a, I have a devil's advocate question. No? Yes, sir. Oo. Why study philosophy? Philosophy professor ka, may PhD ka sa Ateneo, <laughs> di ba? Nagtuturo ka, matagal yes. ka ng tuturo ng philosophy. Mm. Kasi ganito ang pag-iisip ko tungkol dyan. Ano? Kasi pag mm. nag-major ka ng economics o management o social sciences, malakas din naman Ateneo dyan. Ano? Uh, yes. Pag, pag nag-major ka sa mga, mga yun, I guess mas common yung mga majors na yan. No? Ah. Marami kang pwedeng pasukan at trabaho. <laughs> no? Uh, So Totoo. what's the job market like for philosophers and philo majors? <laughs> Hindi masyadong malaki, sir. <laughs> well, so why study philosophy? Yeah, yeah. Well, I I got into it by accident actually, no? Um I was a legal management major, no? Many of my students know this already. And then I I met accounting in second year. <laughs> no? Tapos sabi ng tatay ko kasi I was failing na, no? Sabi ng tatay ko was a commerce major in college, sabi niya, madali lang yung accounting, plus minus lang yan, ano? ba't ka ba hirap na hirap dyan? <laughs> sabi ko, hindi ko talaga mabalance yung mga balance sheets. Hindi ko alam kung bakit laging parang may nagnanakaw akong empleyado na hindi nagbabalance. Eh, no? So, ang, ang ginawa ko, lumapit ako dun sa guidance counselor, tapos tinanong ko siya, kasi ang bala ko talaga, sir, di ba, mag-law. No? So mm-hmm. sabi ko sa kanya, mama, ano ba yung pwedeng prelo na walang numero? <laughs> sabi, niya, sabi niya, well, you have psychology, economy, well, economics meron. No? Tapos sinabi niya yung philosophy. At that time, second year college, wala talaga akong idea kung ano yung philosophy. No? Truthfully speaking. Tapos tinanong siya, so ma'am, ano yung ginagawa sa philo? Well, magbabasa-basa, magmumuni-muni. <laughs> Tapos sabi ko, ano pa, ano pa po? Y- yun lang. Tapos may diploma na. <laughs> so, 
it again yung 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 mga initiative ng mga tao minsan na parang I got into philosophy because you know I was really into I don't know wisdom at mga malalalim na mga bagay not true at all I got into it purely for convenience no because I just really wanted to graduate no pero as with many things that we get into by accident we also can foresee how we can fall in love with it in the process no So yun yung nangyari sir no after graduating in 2002 uh, nagmasters ako no kasi nga parang nagkaroon ako ng mental health issue rin noon eh so I I wasn't ready to to take the law exam so in the meantime guys <laughs> ko mag-MA na lang muna ako and the rest is history no so Okay nagturo... balikan lang natin yung sinabi mo no you, you, you sabi mo uh, you fell in love with it uh, by accident no so what is there to love about philosophy. Yun nga sir eh, yung ang ang isa sa mga natutunan ko sa pilosopiya, lalo na din sa mga magagaling kong naging guro si na Father Ferriols, no, si Dr. Reyes, Dr. Garcia, no, yung mga pillars of the philosophy department. Binibigyan ka talaga niya yung pinag-usapan natin kanina pre-show, no? Binibigyan ka talaga niya ng kakaibang pagtanaw sa buhay eh. No? parang it's it's a lens na hindi yung pag nasuot mo na hindi mo na pwedeng matanggal no so tuwing tumitingin ako halimbawa sa isang realidad sa isang karanasan laging merong may nangyayaring parang reading between the lines no na parang laging naghahanap ng so ano yung pinakabuod na katotohanan nito beneath the you know beneath the surface no at dala-dala mo yun, no? Hindi kailangan nasa loob ka lang ng classroom, hindi kailangan nasa library ka, no? Tumitingin ka sa karanasan, tapos nakakakita ka ng kamatayan, <laughs> nakakakita ka ng pag-asa, nakakakita ka ng kalayaan, no? And to me, parang yun talaga yung binigay sa akin ng 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 pilosopiya, no? Panibagong pananaw tungkol sa buhay na talagang wala ako. <laughs> before before that fateful day in the guidance counselor's room. So, to answer your question more directly, oo, parang mahirap makahanap ng trabaho para sa pilosopo. Pero marami na rin ang nagsasabi. I, I think I read an article uh, on this. Sinabi na yung, yung skill ng critical thinking no, is also an incentive pagdating sa hiring. So not necessarily yung yung hard skills, no. Pero kasi yun pwede, parang pwede mo matutunan daw on the job, eh, no. Pero yung the way you see a problem, the way you approach a certain experience. Parang yun yung mas mahirap matutunan, eh, 'di ba? On the job, no. So kung dala mo na yun, no, yung 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 kakayahan mo na maging bukas sa karanasan, no, makipag-usap, makipagdiskurso sa kapwa nang may may bukas na isip no yun yung mahirap ituro eh kapag nasa mundo ka na ng kapitalismo <laughs> di ba so dala-dala mo na yon di ba kapag pumapasok ka so ba, akin sa tingin ko very flexible naman no yung 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 uh, pagiging philo major hindi kailangan magpari lang o magteacher lang no hmm. may mga estudyante ako na you know nasa HR nasa mga um policy making bodies etc no yung isa kong colleague ngayon ay kasama dun sa pagka-craft ng pagte-train ng mga estudyante uh, sa Bangsamoro no para to help them understand how to craft laws etc no so maraming pwedeng pasukan actually sir sa akin yung philosophy hindi lang sa yung <laughs> alam mo yan yung typical well, just as an example i share ko lang no i mean yes. related to that uh, Uh, and, and I don't know what uh, their study of philosophy had to do with it, pero uh, may dalawa akong kilala na medyo malapit din sa akin. Well, one is uh, president of our company, si G- sa JMA Network, yes. no, si Jimmy Gravit. Uh, he was a philosophy major. No? Oh, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and oh, walang advanced degree yan. Ah. Uh, okay. Yeah, and then of course I listen to him during meetings and then matala siya mag-isip, no? Um mm. yung syempre when you're running a big company, maraming iba't ibang klase ng problema, no? Uh, mm. From from human resources to engineering to <laughs> entertainment to mm. I mean, ang daming sitwasyon, no, na kailangan mong 
and if you're the president, you have to have some knowledge and and uh, thoughts and ideas about all of these things. No, hindi yes. ka pwede mag-specialize. Uh, ang galing niya mag-analyze ng problema. Okay. And then mag-synthesize ng suggestions ng iba. And then come up with a solution. Kasi that's mm. what executives do, di ba? And yeah. then you execute. You execute <laughs> the solution, right? Mm. Um, but it starts with listening, I think, to... Yes. Uh, a lot of different well of course you need to understand the problem mm, mm. and know and 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 you know know how it became a problem so yon dun pa lang kailangan medyo analytical ka na, no? and then kind of lead others to mm-hmm. a solution of the problem yes even problems like how do we grow the company yeah it's you know i mean it's not necessarily a bad problem but it's a problem diba it's a problem you need to solve parang you, you it, otherwise you become stagnant and i have another i have another example yung kaklase ko naman um nagmajor din siya ng uh, philosophy sa ateneo ren no uh, oh. sa klase mo. so he's 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 my age but he eventually became chief financial officer mm. ng uh, he rose through the ranks in the corporate world no ano, hindi nag-aral yun ng, ano, hindi siya nag, uh, nag-ME or mm. uh, finance. I mean, mm. philosophy major siya. Um, and then, eventually, he became, you know, CEO of a company. And he's, he's ano, he's um, much sought after as a business consultant now kasi medyo semi-retired. Ang point ko lang dito is, parang these are guys who studied philosophy and the way I observe them is parang they have a they have a way of thinking through problems and situations yeah. where they're often right you got on eh kasi di ba i mean you, medyo high stakes eh when you're running a company that yeah. employs a lot of people that's worth a lot of money that has a mm. big impact on society etc like my friend yung yung kaklase ko no? he he ran an airline di ba Yeah, you you can't you can't make too many mistakes when you r- run an airline, right? <laughs> I mean, oh, so uh, oh, yeah, yeah, and oh, well, a media company as well. Yeah. So, mm. um, uh, you know these these people, these guys. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe uh, there might be exceptions to the rule. I don't know. And maybe even if they majored in something else, they would still succeed and do yeah. the same thing. I don't know. I don't know. But it just so happens they're philosophy majors. But in my mind, um. Early on, the way I the way I uh, saw them was their being philosophy majors was an advantage to them. Yeah. Because uh, and I'm not a philosophy major, so I'm I'm you know I'm just speculating here. Yeah. I never you know I didn't take too much philosophy in my <laughs> in my college career. No, but uh, yun ang pagkaalam ko sa sa philosophy uh, and and studying it intensely is that. Mm. Um, it's really the life of the mind, eh? and um, yeah. and uh, a, a lot of a lot of leadership uh, roles uh, yes. have a lot of thinking involved, and yes. you have to you have to be able to synthesize uh, so much information, so much inputs, and give and give corresponding weights to them. So there's mm. you know there are value judgments that yes. you make all the time about ano ba mas importante rito, di ba? Tao, mm. pera, etc., etc., di ba? Um, ay, lalo na ngayon pandemya, 'di ba? Ano ba? Hmm. Safety ba, trabaho, pera, ano ba, 'di ba? How hmm. do you paano hmm. titimbangin lahat 'yan, no? yeah. So So it's not just a matter of numbers, eh. It's a True. matter of how much value you put on certain things, no? That all yes. have value. Mm-hmm. 'Di ba? But um and and it and it forces you to ano eh, you, you you need to decide on the fly, eh, 'di ba? A lot yes. of these, no? Thinking so on your feet. This is a, this is a, I don't even <laughs> know sir, if you want to talk about this. Tama, tama yeah. yung sinasabi niya, sir. Kasi, I mean, even for Plato, sa, sa The Republic, sinabi niya ang, ang dapat na isang maging pang, uh, leader ng isang polis o ng isang lipunan ay philosopher king. No? So, binibigyang... Yung sinabi niyo, yung, yung CEO self na execution, what do we do? Hindi siya pwedeng ihiwalay dun sa teorya, yung praxis at teorya. Yun siguro yung nabibigyang diin sa gawain ng pamimilosopiya na 
minsan iniisip ng mga tao yung filo, ah muni-muni lang 'yan, no? Yun nga sabi niyo kanina, life of the mind, nakakulong sa mga konsepto, idea, out of touch, no? Too idealistic, no? Pero ang daming sangay sa pilosopiya, sir, na talagang nakaugat, no? Sa sa practical na karanasan ng mga tao. Ano ba? Bioethics, no? Even ethics, no? Uh, environmental philosophy, which I teach also dahil, kung, di ba, yung something in common we have with the, your, your interest in the environment. I, I do teach um, deep ecology. Yan, nagtuturo rin ako niyan. So, nakikita ko talaga, no, na misconception yun. Yung pag-iniisip na yung ah, filo, yun. <laughs> di ba? Mga taong ermitan yung nakakulong sa bahay, puno ng libro, <laughs> di ba? Tapos merong skull, tapos memento mori. Wala silang ginawa, kundi you know, magmuni ng kamatayan nila. No? Hindi totoo yan eh. Yung tinuro sa akin, nung isang napagaling na guro, uh, nakilala ng lahat ng atinista, no? si Father Ferriols, Ah, uh, yung pamimilosopi ay ginagawa, no? So ito ay nakukuha nangyayari sa sa pakikisangkot sa talagang nangyayari at hindi sa pag-retreat, no? Paghiwalay, no? Minsan mahalaga 'yon, 'di ba, para makita mo yung bigger picture. Pero yung favorite line niya, yung lundagin mo baby, 'di ba? Hindi mo malalaman kung gaano kalalim yung swimming pool kung panonorin mo lang yung swimming pool sa gilid, no? So kung gusto mong Danasin ng katotohanan, na yun naman ang minamahal ng pilosopo, lundagin mo, baby. No? Na nakikita ko nga yan, sir, sa ano mo eh, sa kasaysayan mo bilang isang investigative journalist. No? Kung pwede tayong pumunta doon. Na, you know, sabi Sorry. niya sa akin, sa, okay. yes, yes, sir. Excuse me, bago tayo umalis kay <laughs> Father Perios. No? Yes, sir. Gusto ko lang i-share yung favorite quote ko naman kasi nag-share ka ah, ng favorite. Okay, okay. Yun, yun favorite pala. quote ko kay Father Ferriol. No? And, uh, and he and he just and he passed away like a yes. couple of years ago lang, no? So yes. uh, tatama lang yun na magbigay pugay tayo ngayon sa kanya. Pero uh, nung namatay siya, one of the quotes from Father Ferriol that I that I tweeted was, "Huwag mong tanungin kung mahirap. Mm-hmm. Tanungin mo kung mahalaga." mahalaga. Yes. And that's something I've repeated to so many <laughs> other people. Mm. including my son kasi syempre you know kids young people or anyone you know minsan sabihin mo ang hirap di ba mm. gusto mo mm. gawin to pero mahirap pero sabi ko ang unang <laughs> dapat tanungin mo sa sarili mo ito ba'y mahalaga mahalaga yes and if it's worth the and if it's worth it if it's really important to you if it's really valuable whether it's nang liligaw ka or <laughs> trabaho related or sport yes. or a uh. hobby <laughs> kailan isipin mo na mahalaga ba to Mm. Kung mahalaga yan talaga sa'yo, mag-ahanap ka ng paraan. Paraan. Awa. Oh, so again, that's a matter of perspective, di ba? Kasi mm. kung, kung, kung comfort mo lang ang iisipin mo, kung hardship, kung ganun, uh, mm. marami kang hindi mo gagawin, di ba? Yes. Pero kung unang iisipin mo, ano mahalaga to. Yes. And, it, and it, you can apply it to so many, so many things today eh. Mm. Uh, but anyway, I, I just wanted to just wanted to share yeah. that before we move on to something else. <laughs> <laughs> Pero sir, I I do resonate with that quote a lot also. No? Uh, kasi nga personally, I've gone through a lot of mental challenges in my life. We and there are periods in my professional career that I wanted to quit. Kasi my my mental health, yung yung you know, I, I I was diagnosed with depression and anxiety disorder. So pag inisip mo pag teacher ka, parang hirap <laughs> daladala mo 'yun sa, sa harap ng 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 mga estudyante mo araw-araw, 'di ba? So 'yun, minsan 'yun din yung nagtutulak sa akin na, you know, minsan talagit na ng klase, gusto ko na lang umuwi kasi magkakapanic at ako or something. Eh, di ba, ganun ang anxiety disorder. Bigla ka na lang walang dahilan, di ba? Pero yun, yung, yung, tano, yung, yung issue ng, teka, teka, malaga ba itong ginagawa mo at pwede mo na lang ba itong iwan for your convenience and, you know, para lang mapatahan mo yung sarili mo. And yun, yun, yun yung, I do resonate with what Father said na itanong mo kung mahalaga. Kung mahalaga, makakahanap ka ng paraan eh. You know? So, this year marks my 20th year <laughs> in the academy. So, uh, ayan, eh, dala ko rin yun yung, yung sinasabi niyo, sir. So, so gets na gets ko yan. No? So, sir, puntahan na natin. Yung, syempre, kilala kayo no, ng lahat ng Pilipino here and abroad. <laughs> 
Talaga. Oo, no? Oo naman. Grabe. 40 years of experience, no? Interesado ko, sir, doon sa pagbababad. So, ideya ng pagbababad na isang bagay sa pilosopiya na lagi namin pinag-uusapan. No? Kung gusto mong malaman ng katotohanan, magbabad ka sa talagang nangyayari. No? So, sa, sa mga ginawa niyong dokumentaryo no? para sa probe, para sa eyewitness, etc. Ano yung mga natutunan nyo sa tingin nyo no? na doon sa mga karanasan, sa mga nakausap nyo, nakita nyo, no? yung mga katotohanan na yung parang ayaw mong makita o hindi mo sinasadyang makita pero nagpakita sa'yo and now you cannot unsee it. Naintindihan nyo, sir? Yung, yung talagang pumukaw sa loob mo na kahit you, know, you want to turn a blind eye, ayaw mo nang isipin kasi nakaka-stress o nakakatanggal lang ng pag-asa pero hindi hinahalina ka at pinopwersa kang kumprontahin siya at kailangan may gawin ka, makinig ka, humarap ka sa akin. So y- yun yung parang iniisip ko no? sa, sa, sa mga ginawa nyo dati. An- ano yung mga ganong karanasan? Okay. Uh, wow. Uh, medyo well, malawak at malalim yung tanong yes. na yan. But I think, I, I think um, to give it uh, perspective lang, no? Uh, kasi ang dami ko ng karanasan, no? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ang uh, dami ko ng ginawang storya, uh, etc. But rather than um, ikwento ko yung mga iba't ibang storya ang nagawa ko na at mga mm. natutunan ko, bigyan ko muna ng konteksto, no? Uh, okay, sir. Uh, yung, yung motivations ko sa pag pagiging dokumentarista, pagiging isang mamamahayag o manunulat uh, kasi I consider myself uh, all all three you know. Um uh, may ano yan um naka, nakaugat yan sa aking paghahanap ng sarili. Uh, mm. we're all searching mm. for ourselves no but ako kasi um uh, pinalaki ako sa abroad eh. Um okay. Uh, yung yung tatay ko ay uh, matagal naging diplomat or mm. service officer so uh, although i was born in the philippines um, may tinatawag na third culture kid no uh, ah, yes yung uh, more, more yung, yung uh, parang you don't feel you really belong anywhere pag lana i feel awkward when people ask me you know anong probinsya mo uh, or ano yung roots mo uh, because uh, a big part of my life no in, chi- in childhood ko was was in the united states no mm-hmm. and then um, when we came home in the 70s uh hindi ako marunong magtagalog no and oh, okay. uh, very american uh, i went to uh, all white schools uh, mm-hmm. mga class picture namin minsan ako lang yung brown face <laughs> or colored face me or there, there might be one african american maybe one other asian and maybe one latino everyone else was white so may ganun na kong background ano so uh, umuwi ako i didn't really know um what i was and it and it caused me um some anxiety rin you know mm. uh, you know i wasn't i th- i was not professionally <laughs> diagnosed, uh, diagnosed <laughs> and that, but, but I felt uh, an outcast, no? Yeah, uh, papasok ka sa, sa bagong school, ikaw ang pinakabago, hindi ka marunong magtagalog, tinutukso ka ng mga kaklase mo. Uh, you really felt, you know, like you're you're out of, you know, you're a fish out of water. Uh, and then but at the same time, iisipin mo in a, in a kind of a intellectual way, you know that you're from here, no? But at the same time, in a way, uh, you also felt um, uh, you didn't belong, no? So uh, and then I went, so high school, uh, sa Ateneo High School, unti-unti ako na-realize, okay, I'm really Filipino, etc. No, Pero, you know, a lot of my classmates still saw me as kind of an American boy or yung ganon. Alam mo yung, uh, <laughs> yeah. alam mo yung high school culture. Eh? Uh... And then I eventually went back to the States no, for college. Mm. Uh, and then college, uh, again, I was mostly a white college no sa states and um but i really got into college journalism and mm. uh but at the same time um there was one there was one thing that that happened in college that that really made me start thinking about going home and kind of pursuing all of these questions about my identity you know mm. um nag si Ninoy Aquino 
mm. uh, was in the Boston area at the same time I was there in college. Oh, okay. So, so uh, I started college in the Boston area, 1979. Nino Aquino arrived in 1981. Mm. And then his family followed, uh, including Noy Noy, Corey, and uh, the sisters. Um, and then I graduated in 1983. Oh, and yeah, and you know what also happened in 1983? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I went home August 21 mm-hmm. and was killed at the airport. Uh, and then, you know, history changed. And, you know, um, and it changed the lives of a lot of people, individual mm-hmm. people, small people, uh, you know, like myself. Bagong graduate, di ko alam kung gagawin ko sa buhay. You know, my parents wanted me to stay in the States, etc. I wanted to be a journalist. Tapos naisi ko, ang daming nangyayari sa Pilipinas. So, uh, I decided to go home. No, I mm. eventually uh, went home in 1984. Nagturo ako sa Ateneo High School. No, um, mm. Kasi, mm. Uh, I, I couldn't get a job as a you know full-time journalist uh, in the field. Wala akong kilala. Eh. <laughs> Oo, wala. Pero nag-offer sa akin na oh, yung Ateneo High School. Mm. Nag, you know, para magturo ng English, naisip siguro na, nag-aaral ko sa Amerika. <laughs> siguro naman, para mag-English. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, pwede magturo ng English. So, nagturo ako ng English ng dalawang taon. And then, you know, nangyari 1986, and um, eventually I went into full-time journalism, no? Mm. But to answer your question, um, yung isang natuklasan ko in a, in a very broad way was uh, Pilipino ako. Mm. I decided na Pilipino ako. I, you know, I grew up, ano ba ako? Amerikano ba ako? Hindi man ako puti. Pero hindi naman lahat ng Amerikano puti. Ang Pilipino pwede na maging Amerikano. Like mm. mga pinsan ko naging Amerikano. So ano ba talaga ako? No? And then uh, pag uwi ko ng Pilipinas, uh, teenager ako, parang tinutukso ako na hindi mo rin magtagalog, hindi ko alam yung kultura, etc. Et no? So parang I felt so out of place. No? But I came back, mm. I got really into the politics of uh, the 1980s in the Philippines mm, uh, mm. bago ako nag uh, full-time journalism and um, but still it, it was still a search for who I was no? mm, um, mm. and journalism you know sometimes st- students ask me you know why did you become a journalist no? something as basic <laughs> as that uh, and it's a, it's, a, it's a legit question yeah you know I just asked you why you became a philosophy professor. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's a little question, right? So um, the way I answer it is, is, is three ways. No, well, one, um, if if you care about the world outside of your own little bubble, mm. yes, uh, you you want to be of service somehow. Mm-hmm. Na kailangan uh, ibagay mo doon sa iyong desires and also strengths, right? Yes. Uh, uh, number two. Um, uh, I wanted to lead an interesting life. I didn't want to have a boring life. I mean, that's a mother okay. question, uh, answer, but a lot of people want to leave in, uh, lead interesting lives, but they don't make that plunge. Hindi sila yeah. Yes. Diba? yes. Oh. Um, and and um, sometimes it's risky. Diba? Mm. Becoming mm. A free, I was a freelancer for a while. Now, risky yon. Hindi mo alam kung saan magagaling yung susunod mong paycheck, etc. Yes. No? Um, but the third reason was. I wanted to have a clearer sense of my identity, and I and to do that, I needed to know my country. Mm. I needed yes. to know my culture, and mm. I couldn't do that if I was just going to an office every day in the same place. What's the scariest story you is know? It a book, a movie, a TV or show? Or is it something that happened in real life? My name is Andrew. And I'm Come Ninu. Join us as we talk all things horror. Mm. The frightening, alarming, real life tales show. Out wherever, wherever you're, you're listening, listening to, to right, right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, journalism gave me the opportunity to really get to know my country, my culture, my ethnicity. Because when I say ethnicity, it's your province, combination of Ilongo and Ilocano. I, but I didn't grow up knowing either culture because mm-hmm. I, I'm not third. You know, I'm I'm a from a globe, naging global citizen kid ako, eh. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you you know, you don't belong anywhere, but you belong everywhere. Parang yes. ganon. Uh, ganon. Uh, but I wanted to belong somewhere, no? And I wanted to belong to the Philippines. But I knew that um, uh, it's hard work, no? Mm. I mean, for you to say that you you're from the Philippines and you're Filipino, to me, it's not something I, I wanted to. Um, 
uh, wanted I wanted to think was easy, di ba? Mm, because it's mm. not. It's not. Uh, because I, it was a struggle. Eh? It was a struggle because a lot of people made me think I wasn't a real Filipino. Oh. So I had to learn. I had to learn how to speak Filipino. Hmm. And um and you know and then tuloy tuloy na yung proseso na yon and um journalism gave me the opportunity to visit almost all the provinces in the Philippines so many islands in the Philippines so many diaspora communities of Filipinos hmm. Hmm. outside the Philippines um and enabled me to spend time in a lot of cu- cultures tribal hmm. communities Moro communities. Uh, island communities, urban communities. I mean, I you know, it's been a long career, no? So yeah. I've been able to imbibe a lot of these, you know, lessons from them, these experiences from them, um, and um, and of course, I learned I learned uh, not just about you know contemporary Philippines, you know what my country is like now, what my mm. society is like now, but what what it was like before. Before. Yeah. Yeah, because um, in a lot of places in the Philippines, I mean, history is still very much alive. You know, mm. our, our culture is is still influenced a great deal by by his. And I majored in history, by the way. Yeah. So I've yeah. always been quite conscious of of uh, historical uh, aspects of things. Mm. You no. Know? So um, so my getting to know my country went in a lot of different directions. Uh, and um, although you know, I still feel comfortable when I go overseas. When I talk to foreigners, hmm. I can, you know, I can. I spent a lot of time in Texas, so I can understand the drawl. <laughs> you know, my brother, my brother is a longtime uh, high school teacher and principal in mm. Texas, you know? okay. which is a very conservative yes. uh, American <laughs> state. You no. Know? Yeah. Um, uh, and my mother, you know, spent many years there as well. So I used to go there a lot, no? So mm. I, I can feel comfortable there as well, no? And uh, so in a way, parang I, have, I have a global perspective. But after all of this time, I can say with confidence and with certainty na ako ay isang Pilipino. Pilipino, yeah. Oh, And that's, that's to answer your question. I mean, it's yeah. very big. I mean, that's, you know, I'm sure a lot of your, your students and people <laughs> we know in the Philippines. Yeah. Don't even think about that question. Yes. And never even questioned it and take it for granted. But they mm. don't, you know. Everyone has a different experience yeah. in life. And my experience in life was I really felt out of place mm. for a long time, and um, because of my career, uh, I really got to know my country fairly well. Yes. And uh, to the to the ex- to the point where um, I I learned our ancient writing system. Mm. Yeah, the buy buy-in. Yeah, became quite familiar with uh, pre-colonial history because it's you know by buying is tied up with that, and the roots of our identity mm-hmm. is pre-colonial, diba? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. a lot of Filipinos don't know that we still have a living, ancient culture. Uh, it's hard to find sometimes, but um, and it's and it can be expressed in its own writing system, oh. and because I know it. And I've learned it, and I teach it. Parang feeling ko, um, I'm in touch not just with my, you know, my roots as a modern Filipino, but I'm in touch with the ancient roots, ancient roots. of our identity. Yes. You know? uh, so, parang feeling ko, I finally feel whole. Mm, mm. You know. W H O L E. I feel whole as as yeah. a person. Yeah. As a person, uh, and when I talk about Filipino identity, um, I I feel I can I can talk about it w- with some with confidence with and confidence. even authority. Yeah. yeah. So sir, makikita natin no na well dalawang bagay yung na, na nakita kong pwede nating tignan na insights ng sinabi nyo. No? Na tinuturo ko rin to sa mga estudyante. No? Um, lahat tayo, sabi nyo nga kanina, gusto natin malaman kung sino tayo. No? But sometimes, uh, wala tayo makaranasan na nakapag-uudyok sa atin na itanong yun. We, we just take it for granted. No? We, we take on the identities na binibigay sa atin ng lipunan, ng ating pamilya, and just 
you know, we just perform the role, no? But we don't really bother asking, you know, the, the genuinely, you know, individualizing question of sino ba talaga ako? No? Hindi lang bilang anak, hindi lang bilang estudyante, hindi lang bilang lalaki. Or yung core ko, no? yung sarili ko, sino ba talaga ako? What kind of a human being am I? And how am I unique? No, from other human beings. No? Ang ganda nung insight nyo kasi na, na, napakita na hindi mo talaga masasagot yung tanong na yun kung hindi ka makikitagpo sa hindi ikaw. No? Kung hindi ka lalabas dun yung sinasabing comfort zone, hindi ka makukontento dun sa binigay sa yung label no? at susubukan mong makipagdiskurso no? sa iba't ibang aspeto ng pagiging tao. No, yung pagiging Moro, pagiging Cebuano, pagiging uh, Texan, no, etc. No? Yung talagang yung sinasabing higilian, di ba? Thesis, antithesis, synthesis. Doon talaga nabubuo yung, yung mas malawak at mas malalim na pag-unawa mo sa sarili mo kapag humaharap ka sa isang hindi ikaw. No? Kasi yun lang yung nakakahugot ng sarili mo eh no? na kailangan mong magsalita in your own voice, kailangan mong i-share yung sarili mong ideas, no? Pag hinahamon ka sa isang diskurso halimbawa o pag nagkukuwento ka, no? Walang ibang pwedeng makapagpalabas niyan at yung iba yung naririnig mo yung sarili mong nagsasalita doon sa iniisip mo lang yung sinasabi mo, no? Na, na may nakikinig sa iyo, na, na ibang tao, na may ibang perspektibo na na hindi pareho ng buhay mo no na hindi mo lang salamin no na hindi ka lang humaharap sa isang kamukha mo rin no so ang ganda nung nung, nung daloy no nung, nung nakita ko na hindi nyo alam kung you know mer me, actually merong akong nabasang undergraduate MA ah, no undergraduate philosophy degree thesis about third culture kids you know um kaya pamilyar ako doon sa, sa sa sinasabi niyo na yun, yun nga no yun yung issue na where do i belong no ako kasi parang hindi ko yan issue kasi alam mo yun yung hindi ganun yung tanong ko eh kasi iba yung tinubuan kong konteksto no at hindi ko naging issue ever yung belongingness no marikeño ko pilipino ko i mean hindi hindi siya issue pero yung yung galing sa isang tao na Uy, may ganong paraan pala ng pamumuhay na hindi kagaya sa akin. At dahil iba yung paraan ng pamumuhay niya, iba yung mga tanong niya. At yung mga issue hindi ko ini-issue, ini-issue niya. <laughs> so, yung yung tanong niyo comes from a very genuine place, I think, na I think mo, many listeners can also relate to, no? Hindi lang because of their ethnicity, nationality issues, no? Pero yung yung panahon ngayon na it's such a global, you know, culture, no, ang daming nakikita sa Instagram, you know, performance of identities here and there, no. At paano ba ako maging ako? <laughs> Hindi ba? Pa- paano ba maging ako, no? Gagayahin ko ba si Dua Lipa, <laughs> 'di ba? Uh, uh, kailangan ko bang maging kasing nakakatawa ni ni Kevin Hart or whatever, no? Kailangan bang maging nakakatawa ako gaya ni Vice Ganda para maging ako ako. No. So, ang ganda nung nung insight na kailangan mong lumabas dun sa mundo lang ng konsepto na 'yon dun sa screen na 'yon na parang naghahanap ka lang ng exemplars, role models, gagayin mo. Kasi yung mga nakikita naman nila sir sa screen, di ba, sa Instagram, mga ano yan eh, mga virtual identity siya ng mga tao. No? At hindi, yan, hindi sila yan. Na minsan nakakalimutan natin na iba yung realidad <laughs> dun sa talagang tao. Di ba? Kaya minsan nagugulat ako pag nakausap ko yung isang tao na kilala ko lang sa social media. Tapos biglang ganun, ganun pala siya sa personal. No? Kaya yung pagbababad nyo, I think, doon sa, sa dokumentaryo, doon sa mundo na yon talagang napipilitan kang humarap sa hindi ikaw at napipilitan kang ipakita yung pagiging ikaw mo. And unconsciously, isinisilang ka rin sa bawat dokumentaryong ginagawa mo. May panibagong aspeto ng sarili mo na natutuklasan, no, sir? Tama ba yun? Na parang you're, you're being reborn every time you encounter difference. Is that something that that is present in your experience as a documentarist? What do you mean by reborn? 
Yeah. Uh, What I mean is parang may panibagong ikaw in the sense na panibagong pananaw sa sarili, panibagong pananaw sa mundo, no? Dahil dun sa enkwentro. Of course, there are things that remain, no? There are things, pero yun nga eh, identity is never static. 'Di ba? It, it's dynamic. It evolves, no? Depending yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, no? My opinion is uh, depende dun sa exposure mo sa realidad eh. De- depende yeah. dun sa exposure mo sa sa taong kayang humamon nung pagiging ikaw mo. Yeah. So pwedeng yeah. sabihin okay. sa yang ka na, yang ka na ba? Ang ganjang ka lang. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, yeah, actually totoo 'yan. Um pag may na ako nakakila- may nakikilala akong Pilipino na iba sa akin, iniisip ko kaagad na bukod sa differences, meron din kaming common bond, mm, no? Mm. Uh, pareho yung lahi namin, uh, meron recognizable cultural traits kahit ibang iba yung kanyang ethnic group. Uh, hindi naman nalalayo eh. And mm. in the same way, uh, ako yung yung isang ugat ng aking pride bilang isang Pilipino na lagi kong yung lagi kong naalala na may may katulad ni Rizal sa ating mm. lahi. Uh, mm. and of course you know tayong mga nag-aral din ng kultura at kasaysayan ng ibang bansa, ibang lipunan. Alam natin na may uniqueness eh yung ating kasaysayan eh. And then mm. there are certain heroes that we've had uh, in our yeah. history na wala sa ibang kultura, wala sa ibang bansa. And it, it, it gives us pride. No? So ako, it gives me also strength no? uh, to know na itong mga positive traits ng Pilipino, uh, it's really, these are really strengths that will make us better and remind us na itong mga kasalukuyan nating mga problema, mga kasalukuyang crisis, mga speed bumps lang yan eh. Mm. Um, sa isang mahabang paglalakbay no, uh, bilang bilang lahi, no, bilang isang kultura, isang lipunan, isang bansa towards a much better future. So that's what gives me optimism, no? Kasi parang like when you say, we can't Despite all the problems we're facing, despite all the negativity, alam na we were all exposed to the negativity and yeah. the hate and all of that, no. But despite all of that, ako I'm I'm optimistic kasi how, how can we be so bad if there are all of these positive cultural traits kung nagkaroon tayo ng mga ganitong klaseng tao sa ating kasaysayan yes. mm-hmm. na hanggang ngayon, no, uh, napaka tingkad pa rin ng ating mga uh, alaala tungkol sa kanila, no. Um, yes. Uh, ako, every day I, I try to read some history, you know, some Philippine history kasi um, it, it, it reminds us of, of greatness, no? and not just greatness but goodness no? in, in, yeah. in ideals. No? Um, of course, Rizal is a no-brainer. No? I have um, not, not just the novels. In fact, the novels are very hard to understand. No? But I read mm. his letters. No? His letters are very instructive. Eh? Um, and his and his personal essays but mostly his letters to his kasi dun talaga lumalabas yung personal feelings niya and even his imperfections as a person no? mm-hmm. so i read the letters of of historical figures but recently on my bed right now no um uh one of the volumes of the collected writings of Horacio de la Costa oh yeah the jesuit historian meron no? na I mean, <laughs> Yes, di ba? Yung edited <laughs> Lahat yata ng atinista. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. It's, it's such a treasure, no? Kasi, yeah. um, hindi siya madaling gawin, eh. Kasi, kikita mo yung sa sa forward, parang, or dun sa mga footnotes, it, itong, itong homily na to was, you know, typewritten. Yes. Buti magaling mag-file to si Dela Costa. <laughs> Not, hindi to mga copy-paste lang as ipopolect. Oh, eh. <laughs> Madali na ngayon. Eh. Oo. This, this is really a, a passion project by, yes. by his former students. no Anyway, um, Adam, he, he was such a sharp, wise man. no mm-hmm. And 
I, I read him a lot because I was named after him also. <laughs> oh! Yeah, Horacio de la Cota. Trivia, uh, trivia, mga kaibigan. Horacio Severino. Horacio yeah, pala. My father, uh, you, you know, he only taught for a few years at Ateneo College and my father was lucky to have him as a teacher and... Oh. And uh, and he was a young Jesuit at that time. Huh? Um, mm. You know, my father died in his 80s. So imagine having De La Costa as his teacher. So De La Costa <laughs> had just gotten his PhD in history from Harvard, came back, mm. taught for a couple of years, taught humanities, and um, and then was chairman of the department, etc. And then nagservisyo sa simbahan, mm. nagservisyo sa sa Vatican, sa Rome, etc. No? So his teaching career wasn't really that long, but mm-hmm. yun nga, um, ang impact niya was so great, no? Na, yeah. Uh, his former students uh, decided to to do this project and you know to honor it because ka classic classic ng father ko ito yung editor niya ne, si mm. Robert Roberto Paterno who was a long time mm. I think he was a faculty member then ng Ateneo for a while no? but anyway okay. um, nandun yung uh, mga essays niya his, his letters homilies uh, commencement speeches he was very not just he, not just wise but he was witty Mm-hmm. And, you know, hindi siya masyadong pamoso, no? Uh, mm-hmm. Hindi naman ng karaniwang estudyante sa Pilipinas. Pero um, every time I read him and others, no? Uh, nagkakaroon ako ng uh, inspirasyon. Um, so, that's another way of answering your question. Uh, yeah. Meeting the other, di ba? Yes. Kasi I want to meet people who are not like me. People who are long dead, they're also mm-hmm. the other. Diba? Yes, uh, exactly. Yeah, and uh, and and ako, I'm motivated to do that because as I mentioned, for the longest time, ang perception ko ng sarili, I was also part of the other. Yes, exactly. I was a, I was a brown kid in an all-white yeah. class. I came home to the Philippines. Hindi ako mo Tagalog. I was the only non-Tagalog speaking student in mm-hmm. the school. I had to learn it from scratch. Um, I, I was the only new student in the class. So parang, and, I, mean, and I had a lot of these, you know, I, I, I don't want to exaggerate the, the, the difficulties. I've had a charmed life, no? I mean, mm. uh, I don't consider that suffering, but <laughs> those were really formative experiences that, that motivated me to learn about the other. Yes. Because um, I think the world is full of people who are the other. Yes, We're, we're exactly. all the other. Yes. Ikaw rin, you're the other. Kahit sabi yes. mo, hindi ka umalis sa Pilipinas. We're all the other in one way or another. That's mm. that's what makes us unique. But we're not often conscious of it. Mm-hmm. We're not mm-hmm. often conscious of our uniqueness. Lalo na Pilipina, we're so social. We, yeah. all, we, want, we want to belong to so many groups. We're, we're all very clannish. We're very regionalistic, mm-hmm. etc. No? So we all feel that we belong to one thing or another. But at the same time, you know, we all have our own issues that maybe mm-hmm. we're not always conscious about. Yeah. Sir Kanina, you 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 talked about how you know the the the, the virtues of heroes, di ba? Yeah, yung mga magagandang sinulat ni Father De La Costa, how it inspires you, di ba? Na it gives you hope for the future. Parang nakikita ko kasi at least ngayon na in the current political, you know, ayoko sa anong puntahan to kasi medyo nakaka-stress pag-usapan pero kailangan nating harapin, no? Um Parang laos na ba yung yung virtud? Laos na ba yung virtue sa Pilipino na parang ang tingin na lang ba ng mga tao sa mga taong mabirtud ay hypocrites? Kasi parang yan yung nagiging trend, I think, no? Kaya, di ba, sabi nila yung mga ocho derecho kaya hindi yan nanalo kasi yung kanilang campaign was based on, you know, all these virtues of, di ba, we are incorruptible, we are honorable, we are honest. And then people were kind of turned off daw doon, no? And we see na ngayon yung mga namamayagpag, <laughs> di ba? Tignan lang natin yung top 10, top 12 sa survey ng SWS, etc. sa senatorial slate. Are, di ba, are people more associated with non-virtue, <laughs> di ba, in terms of track record, no? So is this the end of virtue in Philippine politics? Are we that jaded as a culture? Are we that cynical? Diba? Is is this the the era of the the era of the the contrabida, so to speak? No, in the context of what we were talking about, Anina Sinarizal, etc. 
'di ba yung is this the era of the antagonist 'di ba kasi we had Duterte 'di ba and, and now it seems like you know uh, BBM is going to it might happen hopefully not no? pero ano ba yung ano yung nangyayari kasi kayo historian kayo no so baka meron kayong longer view of history to be able to make sense of this No, is this an antithesis of of what happened during EDSA revolution, etc.? Why is this happening? Bakit ayaw na natin sa mabuti, sa mabait, sa malinis? <laughs> Hindi ko talaga maintindihan, no? Okay, well, okay, the way the way I see it is 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 wala naman perfectong tao, no? There okay. there are yeah. um there everyone has a dark side. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't think you can claim na ikaw wala kang dark side ako my mm. dark side ako no i mm. mean sometimes i i have to admit i have hateful thoughts mm-hmm. diba? De, na i have thoughts <laughs> sometimes that, that that will never verbalize i okay. will never verbalize no but there are thoughts mm. that are dark yeah. diba? <laughs> um that that do not do not wish good for other people mm-hmm. diba yeah I, you know but may pumipigil sa akin eh mm. um and it, i think that's a product of our upbringing our our education and our environment no yeah na, the reason why uh very often the dark side of our nature um uh, is not expressed or is not acted on yes. okay so y- yan ang basic premise ko mm. no the way i see the way i see human beings and i think that's i think everyone would agree with that well yeah. I mean, that's basically the freudian sense diba? yung yeah, we're not, we're not, ego yeah. super ego diba? yeah exactly we're not angels mm. here on earth mm. no let's wait until we get to heaven as soon as maybe <laughs> much perfect in the doon uh, or in uh, perfect in existence natin but okay so that's that's the premise no um things happen in history mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. enable the dark side of our human nature to be expressed mm-hmm. to be projected to be externalized mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ano yung hate mo there's something that happens yung yung hate mo sa thoughts mo ah yung yes, yung hate yes, mo yes. sa kalooban mo ano yes, uh, yes. yung hate towards other people mm-hmm. yung 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 ill will yung the yung repressed ganun. the unexpressed yes exactly mm-hmm. na enable siya Okay. Mm-hmm. There are certain moments in history that nagkakaroon ng, ng it could be a leader, it could be a technology, it could mm. be a trend, it could be a fad, it could be some some phenomenon, mm-hmm. some cultural mm-hmm. phenomenon. Um because if you look at history, minsan ganun lang kadali eh, di ba? Mm. Um mainit na diskusyunan. Masarap na kwentuhan. Malinamnam na usapan. At nakakagising na balitaktakan. Parang, Parang kape, kape lang. lang. My name is Jeff. And I'm Waya Angeline. Join us in our conversations at, at Coffee, Coffee na lang, lang Dear Podcast. Podcast. Uh, for example, ngayon, I mean, let's let's go outside the Philippines na lang muna and, and look at uh, uh, Putin. Diba? Hmm. Paano ba nagkaroon ng Putin? I mean, there are, there are protesters in in Russia against yes. the war. Um, so not not every Russian agrees, di ba? Mm. Um, but there was one there was at at one point enough Russians agreed that this person was the best person to lead us. Mm-hmm. It didn't have to be numbers, it just had to be you know, enough people in the right places in Russia. Yeah. And then yeah. then he's br- now he's bringing the world maybe to a bad place, di ba? World War 3. Yeah. Um. Mm. Uh. And and but I, ako, I'm I'm not going to condemn everyone in Russia. Yeah. Diba? Kasi yeah. nakikita ko naman yung mga vlog, yung mga protest. I mean, and it's harder to protest in Russia than it is in the Philippines and yes. other places in the world. So, so you have to imagine that for every person out in the streets in Russia, there are many more who feel the same way but are, don't have the courage to go out there mm. and risk their lives. No. So, um. However, there are there are people who, who who are placed by history in strategic positions like like Putin, mm-hmm. you know, like you know some leaders in the Philippines, etc. And they've used tools 
that ngayon lang nagkaro- ngayon lang nag-emerge sa kasaysayan no um, okay no uh, it's so, yeah. so, easy, to, it's so yeah. easy to weaponize hate it's so easy to weaponize the law because of because of technology social mm. media etc no um and and a lot of people feel now that it's okay to mm. verbalize the dark side of our nature it's yes. okay to express or even act on the dark side of our nature no mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um but ako ang experience ko naman sa buhay yes there are people like that but i, I don't know about you but most of the people in my circles don't act on their dark side yeah they don't commit crimes they don't they don't curse they don't use profanity they do not they do not troll others they do not they do not threaten you know others with violence they do not mm. you, you know you know maybe maybe i'm in my own echo chambers but mm. you upon my own personal life experience in the real world mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i make a distinction between the real world the physical world people i actually interact with in the physical world and it's been harder because of the pandemic yeah versus the online world which has been our predominant experience in the mm. past couple of years no um uh parang my my own observation is that i think there are still more people who are who are practicing self control who are mm-hmm. who are through sheer through a sheer act of will they are not acting on the dark side of mm-hmm. their natures and expressing and your aqua feeling ko i'm i mean look you since you wanted to talk about politics no i mean ako, mm. i'm a journalist i'm you know we play referee in, yeah. in, in the political in these political contests no so i cannot i cannot say who am i going to vote for yeah 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 understood all of that yeah. yeah however you know i belong to a family i have mm. i have a family i have friends and um i can see that um you know i have family members who are very active in a particular campaign Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And from what I see, a lot of it is positive energy. Yeah. Mm. Uh, when they when they when they get together, I don't hear a lot of hate. Mm-hmm. It's, I, I only hear uh, plans to support. I I don't hear any, you know, I don't overhear any um, uh, desire to to kill or to. To be violent, wala mm. akong naririnig na ganon, no? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so, ang conclusion ko lang is hindi naman lahat ganon eh. Okay. Hindi naman lahat ganon. Mm. And you mentioned the surveys. Yes, okay, my surveys. But to me, um, ang tawag nyo sa surveys, they're traditional tools. Okay. Traditional okay. tools. And we're in a non-traditional world. Hmm. disrupted we've been upended and yet we're still using traditional tools yeah, to gauge yeah, yeah. sentiment uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, we're living in a world i'm not saying the surveys are wrong huh? but i i'm i'm thinking we need to incorporate other factors into our thinking when we're trying to predict what will happen or when we're trying to evaluate or judge mm. what our society is like mm. Kasi nga, okay, parang, kasi that's the basic premise of your question. Is it is virtue out of style? Yes. Uh, based on metrics that you're seeing. Yes. Diba? yes. But what you and many others are seeing is, yun nga, the products of traditional tools, which in the world of big data, mm, mm. surveys are small data. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because ilang bang respondents sa pinag-uusapan natin? Yeah. 1,200? 1,000? Yeah. Uh, you talk to any statistician. Okay, I'm sure there's a science behind these surveys, but a lot of it is really ex- extrapolation. A lot of it is speculative, mm-hmm. and you're really, and you're still dealing with very small data sets. Yeah. So, yeah. So why use small data in a world of big data? Mm-hmm. Diba? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So hindi ko nag-evolve yung ating tools for evaluating. what the real sentiments are of people. Yeah. Okay. Medyo, mm. medyo lumihis tayo, but mm. kasi yun ang premise eh. Na, yeah, tanong, yeah, yeah. Na, na is virtue going out of style? I, I, I don't 
think so. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Because, because may laban eh. Yung mm-hmm. sinasabi natin um, yung, yung a world where virtue is out of style. Mm-hmm. Diba? Mm-hmm. Uh, th- there are there are people there are still many people in the world where virtue is still the default. Yeah. Rather than doing evil. Okay. Yeah. Just I mean, I can cite many examples. I mean, let's 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 veer away from politics just to just mm-hmm. to illustrate the point. Um, ako, you know, uh, and ako, I feel this in a very personal, intimate way. No, um, I was an early COVID patient. You know, we talked about okay. this for the interview, yeah. and at that time, uh, you know, March 2020, I was hospitalized with, you know, you know, I had pneumonia. You know, I I thought I was going to die, etc. There was no mm. cure. There was no no vaccines. No, there were you no know, no drug treatments. Um, there's a lot of discrimination uh, uh, against uh, COVID patients, etc. And yet, there were people who were willing to go into my room to take yeah. care of me, and they didn't know me. Mm. Mm. To me, these people are not. These people were not driven just because it's their job. I mean, mm-hmm. if you're a if you're a medical worker, you you can work anywhere. Yeah. You if you're a, you know if you're a frontliner you don't have to be a frontliner you don't have to expose yourself to infection but these people did you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. um to me that was one of the clearest expressions of virtue in my lifetime mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's easy to it's easy to show love and and caring for people you know yes for your yes. loved one that's a no brainer alam mm-hmm. natin i mean we do everything for our children our siblings our parents etc but total strangers yes. and we've seen that time and time again during the pandemic uh, after typhoon odette mm-hmm. i mean i had friends you know ako umagawa ako lang i gave small donations i wasn't going to fly to shargao or or Bohol, or to Cebu, etc. To mm. I had friends who did. Mm-hmm. Why? That's virtue. Yeah, yeah. And then these are not these are not exception. These are not exceptions. There were many, many. people like that. As as recent as December, January, mm-hmm. ang daming tumulong. Up to now, ang dami pa rin tumutulong kahit wala na sa balita. And before that, ako personal experience ko. I live 10 kilometers from the volcano. I am seeing the volcano right now outside my window. <laughs> Yes. January 2020, January 12, 2020. Mm. Ang dami, dami, hundreds of thousands of people had to evacuate. They lost their, you know, they, they lost their livelihoods. They didn't, they didn't know where they were going to find the resources to eat, etc. Ang daming tumulong. Mm-hmm. People let them let them stay in their homes. People donated uh, money, food, supplies. Uh, ako na observa ako ng mga community kitchens, emergency mm-hmm. kitchens, na ginawa ng mga volunteer, uh, etc. etc. I mean, mm-hmm. um, yun ang ano, yun ang ano, yun ang sagot ko dyan, na yes. it, it, It's not out of style because I've mm-hmm. seen it. It's not a, it's not an abstract thing for me. Yeah, yeah. Because ako dito, uh, I've had I've had very personal experiences with two of the biggest crises of the past two years, uh, yeah. the pandemic and the volcano. The volcano. Yeah. And um, no matter what your politics was, uh, I don't, I didn't even ask, you know, I didn't ask my nurses, kung mm. DDS ba sila or, or, or Kakamping or Dilawan or whatever. Mm. Wala, hindi mm. naman namin pinag- Ang nakita ko lang yung servisyo nila. Yes. Yes. And, mm. and by extension, nakita ko yung virtue nila no mm. so somehow that has to be enabled on a wider scale yes for us to be a better society actually yeah kasi lahat sa at, you know even even the people who are showing the dark side there's a virtuous side mm. in mm-hmm. their nature mm-hmm. na hindi lang na enable yeah diba lahat tayo sa, sa kalooban natin and I'm no exception no? may sa kalooban ko naglalaban din yung 
yung the dark side and the and the and, and the light yes diba? may may liwanag and then mm. but there's the dark side no naglalaban mm. yan sa bawat isa sa atin and yeah so many sir so many factors in our world right now that will either um enable either of those sides to be dominant yeah and we just need to hope that it's the brighter side that's enabled and maybe not just hope but maybe work so that the brighter side is enabled no matter what your politics is yeah yeah, yeah i mean i i don't want to i don't want to stereotype halimbawa lahat ng mga Marcos supporters, ganito. Mm-hmm. At ang mga Lenny supporters, ganito. I, mm-hmm. I don't want to stereotype them. I, they are, I'm sure there are, there are people on both sides where must dominant yung dark side or must dominant yung bright side. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we need to do. And that's why, that's the role of education. That's the role of cultural mm-hmm. workers like us. Yes. Um, it's the po- point of doing a podcast like this and to have mm. conversations like this is to enable the bright side, to enable mm. the light, to shine yeah. through the darkness of, mm. of whatever else is happening in the world. Yeah. Ang ganda nun, sir. Naka-inspire. <laughs> oh, kasi parang pag bubukas ka ng social media, di ba? At sabi mo nga, because of this this two years of isolation, yung mundo talaga ay mundo through the lens of social media, right? At wala, yun ang, ang makikita mo talaga ay mas malaking porsyento talaga yung display of the dark side. You know, ewan ko kung dahil ba yun sa mga pinafollow ko at algorithms <laughs> ng Facebook kung bakit ganun yung lumalabas. Pero minsan, nakakalimutan mo, ang ganda nung sinabi nyo, no? na, na i-differentiate yung numero, yung mga nire-representa nun, surveys, etc. Iba yun sa totoong nangyayari, sa talagang nangyayari. No? Yung karanasan nyo bilang pasyente na nakatanggap ng tulong mula sa mga estranghero na ginagawa yung kanilang trabaho no? sa, sa mga yun, pumutok yung vulkan, yung typhoon o death, all of these things. Uh, perhaps ang ganda ng salita rin na, na ginamit nyo, no? yung enable, no? na it wants to maximize speech. So it wants to provoke. And diba? Yun nga eh, parang... Gusto niya magsalita yung id mo, gusto niyang ilabas. Tapos, you know, we have certain leaders na parang sila pa yung nagiging ano mo, mouthpiece mo para ilabas mo yung dark side mo. Tapos, may, meron ka nakikuhang high siguro dun, no na parang, uhoy, di ba? Eh, talaga yung gusto kong sabihin, sinasabi niya, I resonate, di ba? He's my guy, etc. No? At hindi nabibigyan ng sapat na naratibo at espasyo. No, sa palagay ko no sa hindi lang hindi lang sa social media kahit sa mainstream media no yung mga ganitong storya ng ng virtue na sinasabi natin no na hindi siya corny no na wag nating isipan na yung mga mabubuti ay corny mga mabubuti ay you know uh, yung parang out of style nga kagaya ng sinasabi no kasi yung talaga yung panawagan sa atin ng pagpapakatao eh. Hindi <laughs> ba? Ay yung yung bumaling sa pag-asa, bumaling sa totoo, bumaling sa katarungan, no? At hindi mahulog dun sa tinatawag nga nilang animalistic, you know, desires, no, ng ng ating subconscious or whatever, no? So, I think magandang pagmunihan na ano kaya yung Bukod sa, you know, podcast, etc., all of these things na, you know, hindi naman ganun ka-mainstream, no? Paano kaya, na, paano nyo nakikita na pwedeng magkaroon ng exposure? <laughs> no? Bukod sa ginagawa nyo naman, di ba, through, through, through your, in your own way, no? Paano mas maririnig yung boses ng kabutihan? <laughs> Kasi parang nadadrown out siya eh. Kasi yun nga, merong kayong mga karanasan, pero parang whisper sila eh, compared to the hateful you know speech of social media, etc. na mas prevalent sa, sa discourse ngayon. No? Sabi nga ni Dindo Manhit, yung isang... Uh, uh, sab- I forgot his role, no? parang uh, stra- 
Stratcom or Stratcom? something. Or, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Political scientist, yeah. Yeah. Si, ano, sabi niya, we've underestimated the power of social media, di ba? Pagdating sa sa politics, etc. No? So, ano, ano yung... Kasi gusto ko talagang malaman yun, sir. <laughs> Genuine question yan. Kasi nandun na ako sa border ng cynicism and despair minsan eh. Pag nagtitingin ako ng mga story, ano, para ano ba, ba pag-asa ng Pilipinas kung ganitong mag-isip yung mga Pilipino? Ay, I mean, yung, yung ganong typical na isip, no? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Tama ang sinabi mo, no? Mm. Uh, kasi mm. ang ang mga bosses na narinig mo which mm. is which which are forming your view of yes. the kind of the worrisome state of our <laughs> world and our yes. society, you know? Uh-huh. Uh, is they're they're being amplified by social media. Yes. Diba? Which which has has a psychological effect eh, on mm. users no it mm. parang it's it, it's an enabling tool whereas uh you know people people feel that they can say things to you on social media that they will not dare say to say you to inside, inside a classroom yeah <laughs> inside a classroom yeah 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 inside a classroom you there are dami ng social controls eh, or social or values that that are more important or yeah. that are dominant di ba mm-hmm. mm-hmm. eh, sa, sa social media has certain algorithms that value negative emotions yes. and that's why you are rewarded by expressing negative emotions no yes. i mean we're 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 in a way we're we're, we're animals eh na, na we have mm. instincts di ba so yeah. when we see na yung ating uh expressions of hate or yung pagtatroll natin sa kapa biglang nila like nila like na marami ah. like minded na, <laughs> na na tao mm-hmm. parang lalo nating gagawin di ba true true kasi yan ang mas mas nagiging viral etc no so ako number one, i think we have to learn how how to regulate our use of social media okay tinatawag na social media fast no mm-hmm. now unfortunately Um, the pandemic only <laughs> only increased the use and the, the use. dominant yeah. of social media because social media became not just more powerful but it often became the only option and the only tool yes. for us to interact with other human beings mm-hmm. you know? so it became even more dominant rather than just being another diversion like in our previous lives la minsan siya na yung pinaka siya na yung nagmo-monopolize ng ating oras, ng ating attention. Yes. yes. Uh, okay. So, but uh, and then two things happened, no? So social media became more technologically powerful on its own. Mm-hmm. And then the pandemic made us even more dependent. So those two factors yes. kind of combined to create this force that mm. we've never really dealt with before, before. No? yeah we're all we're all sitting at home re- being bombarded by stimuli mm. through social media alone diba exactly And, oh, oh okay however there are now changes that changes that we're perceiving uh that might be might also be revising our perception of where we are. Okay, number one mm-hmm. is in some ways the pandemic is waning. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm sure you've been following the political campaigns. Yes. Diba? <laughs> if, if, if these campaigns happened one or two years ago, walang mm-hmm. tao. Yeah. Now you have for the very first time you have you have the biggest gatherings of people mm-hmm. in a very long time. Yes. When was the last time you had 50,000 people in one place? I, yeah. I, we cannot recall. Yeah. Diba? So that means yung fear and it's not an irrational 
kind of bravery. And then, marami sa atin na bakunahan na. Marami yeah. sa atin na infect na. May antibodies mm. na tayo. Na boost na tayo. Mm. These rallies are outdoors. So, the threat of the pandemic has waned. Yes. Although, nandiyan pa rin. Mm. And there's no, there's no substitute for actual, real-world, physical experience. Yes. True. And anyone Agree. who compared social media, <laughs> with, if you go to one of these gatherings, and I've, I've, I've attended my own share either as an observer or or as a participant in my mm. past, etc. Iba yung, yes. iba yung emotional high iba yung that you ka. get from that. You mm. easily compete with the high you can get from social media engagement, yeah. like, hearts, and all of these things. <laughs> Retweets. Well, yeah. Totoo lang, after so many years of this, it's kind of passe. Yeah. Mm. It's passe. I mean, do we really care na 500 likes yung ating pinost? I mean, okay, maybe at one time, okay. Mm. Ngayon, mas natutuwa pa tayo pag nakukuha natin yung solution sa Wordle, eh, di ba? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, naman, wala naman, that doesn't depend on the likes of other people. Uh, it depends uh, on what happens in our brains, di ba? Mm, May personal mm. satisfaction tayo doon. Pero dati, our sense of self-worth came from mm. how many hearts did our post, you know, how many engagements did we get. So, yeah. But no, now there's an alternative in mm. terms of giving us an emotional high. Mm. Whereas before, everything came from the screen. Yes, yes. Everything, mm. our recreation, our social interaction, our graduations, our education, our work, uh, wakes, funerals, lahat yan. Screen. Screen. Mm. Now, the pandemic is waning in terms of our politics. Mm. I would say at the perfect time. Mm. At the perfect time. Mm. Tinamo, mo, sunod yung gatherings. For whatever, for whoever candidate you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Diba? Mm. Pero there's a particular candidate kung tutuisin mo kasi sila lang nagpumapayag na magpa-drone, di ba? <laughs> Uh-oh. Na mo yung size ng crowds. Imagine if you're in that crowd holding a placard. Mm. Imagine na pag uwi mo yung high mo. Mm. Mama match ba yun ng heart or like? Buon sa pinot mo. Oh no, no, just, Imagine you're you're a human being. We're yeah, social yeah, yeah. animals. Mm. So yes, in a way, you are right. Na okay. Itong social media voices, it's full of hate. Parang nakakasira ng araw and all mm. of that. But imagine if you're if you're part of a crowd that yeah. that is hopeful that is that is parang one with a cause no yes. matter what that no matter what that cause is ah. I'm, mm. not, I'm not being partisan here yes um imagine imagine the emotional impact that has and then yeah. pag-uwi mo ikukuwento mo yun sa pamilya mo mm. ikukuwento mo ngayon sa mga friends mo sa Facebook mm. diba and then you're and then you're looking for ako nakikita ko to sa, sa sa Facebook feed ko you're looking forward to when the same thing happens in your place yeah yeah because you know that kind of event the emotional high that you can get from that kind of event cannot match mm. uh it's it's more than it's much much more than whatever you can experience online for a lot of people yeah. and people are rediscovering it after 2 years two so imagine years. that ikaw uhaw na uhaw ka for a real world human interaction at yeah. ganun ang karanasan mo. So, I cannot... So galing, that, gives galing. Me, that gives me optimism. Eh. That gives me mm. optimism about the world and then it's all happening at the same time. Yeah. Diba? Okay, nandiyan yung surveys. Okay, fine. No? I mean, mm. we're so... Some of us are disturbed by it, etc. Mm. Surveys, again... How did you find out? Online na naman yan. Ang commentary mm. tungkol sa surveys, online na naman yan. But mm. what is your real world experience like? Yan ang kaya, binabuhabali ako doon. Ako nung, anong real world experience ko when I had COVID? Mm. I didn't, I wasn't on my phone. Wala. Mm. I, my, my, my arms were attached to tubes. Hindi ako maka-social media masyado. Ang interaction ko, yung mga tao nagsasakripisya para sa akin. So, naging, naging positive tuloy yung yung perception ko doon sa interaction ko sa kapwa because i'm sure there are people out there in social media who are who are saying mabuti nga sa na covid ka you know i mean no I, there are haters oh, oh there are haters out there na yeah. hindi mo maiwasan 
Pero hindi yan ang naging experience ko personally. Eh. Yeah. So we have to number one regulate our our the time we 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 spend on social media. Yung tinatawag niya social media diet. Oo no, nga. Hindi <laughs> naman tayo magko-consume ng sugar at all of our meals, right? Uh. <laughs> Kailangan maggulay tayo, kailangan mm. may gutas tayo, magtubig tayo imbis na puro soft drinks. I mean, mm. we need to have mental Balanced health diet. Mm. Exactly. And that's the same thing with our social or our online lives. But before kasi wala tayong choice eh. Mm, mm. Ngayon, may choice tayo eh. It's Yon. the... the, the oh, oh, we're, we're, we're getting out of our our cocoons mm-hmm. at just the right time. Just like, the alert right level time. One. But, <laughs> Is yeah, this divine alert? providence, sir? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm just... No, it's not... I'm not talking about anything divine. I'm just yeah, saying... Yeah. Uh, I mean, malas na lang. It took two years. <laughs> oh, God. It took two years for us to reach this point. Hmm. But now, yeah. now we can, we can plan. Mm-hmm. Ako, I, I, my cousin is getting married in in the states in June. But, you know, na postpone na siya. It's been planned for over a year. I never, I didn't know whether ano ba mangyari dito sa Delta, tas nagko nagkaroon ng Omicron. Omicron. Said, yeah, but now I can realistically plan mm-hmm. to to ride an airplane, to go out. I mean, there's these uncertainties have some of them have are are have lessened kasi nandiyan pa rin naman yan eh pero it's mm. lessened i have i have some i have peace of mind because mm. nabakunahan ako etc etc so i think a lot of people are like me they have more yeah. peace of mind i don't want to say they are relaxed or they're mm. being you know carefree or no ang hinahanap natin peace of mind yeah hindi naman there's going to be risk in anything you do with yes. or without a pandemic, diba? But mm. what you need is peace of mind. Mm-hmm. And for the first time, people feel confident, they feel safe enough to go out and interact with large numbers of people in the same place, believing in the same cause. And it's happening for the first time in years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In at least two years. Diba? Mm. Um, and it's a great thing. It's a great thing yeah. for our politics. It's a great thing for the country. Kasi mm. makita, otherwise, what do you ano yung pinaka measure mo ng gauge mo? Survey numbers? Mm. Versus real world? Mm. Di naman botohan ng survey numbers. Eh. But mm-hmm. when a person decides to leave their comfort zone, Mm. despite the negative numbers and go to a place to gather a lot, a lot of different people, in a way, you can say that person is voting with their feet. People are voting yeah. with their feet. Yeah. Iba yung, iba yung magre-respond ka sa survey. Oh, okay. Mag, magla-like-like ka na mga post. Iba, it's so easy. Mm. But but to make a placard, to dress up, to magtawag ka ng mga kaibigan mo para pumunta sa isang lugar. Para mm-hmm. ano. and, and you know that there's still some risk involved, pero you know, yung, yung the, the benefits of, of joining far outweigh you know, the risks involved. Parang, and then when it happens, makikita mo, on, nakikita mo rin online, parang iba rin yung, nakikita ko eh, I, I don't mm-hmm. attend rallies. No? Mm-hmm. I'm not even covering but uh ramdam ko ramdam ko yung 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 emotion yeah yung emotion ngayon and Tsaka yung pagtataya no may pagtataya exactly. talaga na nangyayari exactly. so, yeah so, so there's yeah you're right you know there's a lot of negativity there are negative numbers mm-hmm. but there's also something positive going on yeah that we that we ignore at our peril yeah so laging you know Katotohanan, pag pinapaliwanag ko yan, sir, sa, sa klase, I always go back to its original etymological uh, origin nun sa, sa Greek, no? na Aletheia. So yung Aletheia, yung, yung pagkaunawa ng mga sinaunang Grego sa katotohanan, hindi lang yung fact, hindi, hindi lang yung kung ano yung nakikita, but that's our usual understanding of truth. No? Um, yung Aletheia, it's really the dynamic uncovering of reality no so meron siyang kilos ng 
pagka hindi nagkukubli. So sa English parang it's a movement of unconcealment, no? Pero kasabay nung pag unconcealment, may nako-conceal, no? Kasabay lagi 'yon. So pag may pinapakita, merong nagkukubli, merong hindi nakikita. At ang ganda nung usapan, no, na, na yung laging nandiyan nakikita no dahil na rin sa takda ng kasaysayan na ito yung panahon ng digital technology yung pag-unawa natin sa totoo is always mediated by the screen yung hindi madalas nakikita yung sinasabi nga ni Derrida na the unsaid no nabibigyan niyo ng boses ngayon no nabibigyan niyo ng boses doon sa sinabi niyo na may may kasabay nitong mga nakakabahala kasabay nitong mga nakaka-stress na nakikita natin sa social media, sa Twitter, etc. Merong unsaid, merong concealed na kasing halaga din at kasing bigat at sasabihin pa ng ibang pilosopo kagaya ni Martin Heidegger, mas mahalaga pa nga yung nakukubli kaysa dun sa nakikita eh. No? Kasi mas 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 malapit pa raw yun sa sa talagang totoo. No? So yung misteryo na yon ano yung hindi mo nakikita tuwing meron kang nakikita, nandun yung, baka nandun yung katotohanan. So nabibigyan tayo ng pag-asa nung, nung mga philo peeps no? <laughs> sa sarap ng usapan na ito. Nabibigyan tayo ng pag-asa ni Sir Howie na there's a different angle to reality that we can turn to. No? That we don't have to always focus on what's readily available, di ba? what's always on, what's always on screen, etc. And depend uh, on its narrative for information or our decision-making processes. No? Nandyan lagi yung totoo. No? At kung lalabas ka ng bahay mo, na ngayon na, pwede na. Di ba? Kung makikinig ka sa sigaw ng tao, sa mga rally, etc. Ito yung mga hindi nabigyan ng pagkakataong makita, marinig ng dalawang taon na ngayon ay, no, kagaya ng kinwento ni, ni Sir Howie kanina, nabibigyan na siya ng espasyo. No? At baka doon tayo pwedeng humugot ng pag-asa. No? Na mas, baka mas totoo yung karanasan nga naman. No? Ang ganda na yung Iba yung parang high na nakukuha mo lang sa pag may nag-like, etc. Kesa doon sa nandun ka kabilang, kasama, no, kabalikat ng mga taong pare-pareho kayo ng tinitignan at pare-pareho kayo ng, ng, ng sense of hope no, para sa kinabukasan at pare-pareho kayong handang magtaya no, with your presence. Di ba? Yung sinabi nyo nga, no, voting with your feet. You know, dinadala ka, hinahata ka ng katotohanan na kailangan mong lumabas ng bahay mo, comfort zone, tigilan mo na yan, Twitter, Twitter na yan, pumunta ka kung saan nangyayari yung totoo. No? Kung saan pwede mong ipamalas, ipakita, iparinig kung ano yung paninindigan mo. No? Magtaya. No? Kasi nga, parang hindi ka naman nagtataya pag nag <laughs> like like post post ka lang eh no wala namang mawawala sa iyo eh pero yung di ba the risk diba? sabi nga ni Sir Howie andiyan pa naman yung covid etc no hindi naman niya nawawala no pero yung papasyahin mo na makibahagi sa isang laban no sa isang krusada na meron pa ring pagtalima at pagkilala doon sa mga virtud na parang natatabunan na sa panahon ngayon, no, isa yung magandang pangitain no, na pwedeng magbigay sa atin ng pag-asa sa panahon nito na parang di ba kung sa social media ka lang titingin, eh wala na, talo na to, <laughs> may isipin di ba? Ano pang point di ba? Wala na to, no? Pero yun eh yung binigyan tayo ng alternatibong perspektibo na yung nakukubli, no, the unsaid Diba? Yung natatabunan ng naratibo ng mga trolls, baka nandun yung mas totoo. Diba? The virtue of the healthcare workers, diba? the, the virtue of someone going out of one's way to go to a rally to, to fight for, for one's principles. All of these things matter in 
trying to understand the truth, no? Hindi lang yung filtered algorithmic version of it, pero yung naririnig, nalalasahan, naaamoy, nahahawakang katotohanan na, na nangyayari lang sa pa, direk, direktahang pakikipagkapwa. No? So, Sir Howie, marami salamat doon sa insight na yon, no? Kasi parang feel na feel ko na you know, yung 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 sinasabi niyo ay hindi lamang bunga lang din ng inyong pagiging journalist, no? Or pagiging kung ano pa mang role, no, na ginagampanan niyo sa buhay. Pero parang bunga talaga siya nung inyong personal na karanasan, nung paghahanap ng sarili, yung mga pinagdaanan niyo. Ayoko kung maging mayabang no, na parang sabihin ko parang sana ito yung uh, pagkakataon na parang mas nakilala ng ta- kung ma- sa mga manonood at makikinig, parang baka ito yung paraan para mas makilala natin kung sino yung tunay na na Horacio. <laughs> Horacio Severino. No? Na nakita natin kung paano siya mag-isip tumingin sa realidad no? na hindi quote-unquote scripted no? na nakikita natin sa mga dokumentaryo niya. Pero this free-flowing conversation na di naman namin na no, talaga na parang it has to be this philosophical conversation with a lot of jargon. No? Pero yun nga, kagaya nung sinabi ko, no, yung layunin ng podcast, ng show na ito ay mapakita kung ano yung beneficyo ng you know, pakikipagmuni at pagkikipagdiskurso sa kapwa at pag-pursue dun sa totoo. No? Naki, nagpapasalamat po ako kasama ng production team sa oras na binigay ninyo at pinamalas ninyo sa aming pamimilosopiya bagamat, you know, pwede man sabihin, hindi nyo naman sinadya, no? pero yun, eh, lumalabas yung pagka-pilosofo nyo. Eh. <laughs> no? na, na, sa inyong bahay ko, bo, dyan sa Batangas, no? na kanina, maswerte ako na nakapag-house tour ako sa bahay ni Sir Howie at inimbitahan niya pa nga ako <laughs> na pumunta doon. No? So sir, siguro bilang last uh, message ninyo sa mga nakikinig, sa mga uh, nanonood rin sa YouTube. No? Um, I think really, ang tanong ng kabataan, no? ang tanong ng, I guess karamihan ng mga nakikinig dito sa show na ito ay, Um, can you give us yeah, mga tanong sa akin mga nagko-consult sa aking mga estudyante minsan sir can you give us uh, a reason to to be hopeful despite everything that's going on no kasi parang yun talaga yung issue nila sir no na parang feeling nila minamana nila minamana nila tong sangkatutak na problema na hindi naman sila yung may gawa. Diba? But it's on their plate and, and somehow they have to get through it. But they don't have anything to hold on to. No? Na, that to, to, to motivate them to go on and move forward, do something no? and be active. No? So ano po yung masasabi niyo sa kabataan? No? Sa mga susunod na heranasyon na gagawa ng kasaysayan ng Pilipinas na pwede nilang panghawakan no para tumuloy lang no tumuloy lang at at wag mag magpagapi no dito sa despair dito sa darkness sabi nga natin sa dark side no why should bakit nila kailangan pa ring bumaling sa liwanag sir well unang-una kailangan Tingnan natin yung sarili natin bilang isang ano parang kasama tayo sa kasaysayan eh. And mm. lahat tayo tinatawag eh, di ba? Mm. Ng kung ano man yung nangyayari sa kasaysayan. Um, kasi yun na nga sa Ingles. Sabi mo nga parang namana lang namin ito, itong mga krisis na to, may mm. yun, kasama na yung climate change yan, pandemya, oh, oh, gera, oh. <laughs> politika, et cetera, et cetera. No? Pero, mm. so, sa isang banda, I'm sure maraming, maraming kang isudyante nagta, but why me? Why us? Why yes. our generation? No? Mm. Ako, I think, 
we need to learn to turn the tables on history eh, and say, why not me? Mm. Why not us? Mm. Because kailangan mong paalala sa mga kabataan ngayon, mga estudyante. They are the most empowered generation in history. Mm. Mm. So, if any generation can handle crisis, they can. Mm. Because, well, ako, when I was their age, just to find out anything, pupunta pa akong library. Maghahanap pa ako <laughs> ng libro. Ako, sir. <laughs> well, siguro, mas lalo na ako. Oh, no? Meron lalo pa kami mga index cards mm. na kailangan. Tapos, hihirang kami yung libro. Minsan, makakalimutan mo pang isa ole. May penalty pa yon, etc. Yeah. So, it's so hard to find knowledge. no? So, it was so, and knowledge is power. Yeah. So, it was much harder back then to empower yourself with knowledge. But these days, it's so easy, you know? But power nga is a two-edged sword. Eh. Mm. You can use that power to, to commit evil, basically. Yeah. Diba? Mm. But you can also use that power to help save the world. Mm. Um, diba? I mean, there are... You know, let's. Ako, I've I've learned to face the fact that there are people much much younger than me, who are not even who are not in mainstream media, who are even more influential. Yeah. <laughs> I, My influencers. I, exactly. Who have millions of followers at a very tender age. Imagine the power in their hands. When I was their age, I could not even imagine having that kind of influence or power. Mm-hmm. Wala. Mm-hmm. I had to wait many years established myself in a career before I had any kind of influence. Mm. But now, after a couple of years developing a YouTube channel, there are people in, you know, barely out of their teens who have more influence than me. Yeah, so, and more money. You know, <laughs> the more money, money they're more, getting. More money, yeah. more knowledge, more opportunities, more options, more everything. No, So, huwag niyong sayangin. Yeah, yeah. Huwag niyong sayangin because history gave you problems but history gave you power and gave mm. you influence and gave you so many unique opportunities not just to find yourselves mm. but to connect with other people to connect with like-minded people to connect with people who share your values share your causes mm. and act on them yeah diba? uh, mm. it's it's a unique time in history eh, na you know, we only live once, no? And if, if these opportunities come your way, you know, don't waste them. Because, yeah. you know, don't don't underestimate the kind of impact you're going to have on your society and on the world in general. And it's, to me, that's that's very hopeful. Yeah. That's very hopeful because it gives you a choice. Mm. You're not helpless. You're not powerless. If you tell yeah. yourself that, then you just become a victim. Mm, mm, mm. But you, you need not be a victim. Yeah. They need not be victims. They're not just, you know, flotsam in the sea. <laughs> yeah. Na nadadalang uh, agos. Mm-hmm. They can create the waves. Mm. Parang inandin so, sa likod ko, sir. <laughs> yeah. So, may kasabihan na, you know, rock the boat. Di ba? Mm. No, don't, don't just rock the boat. Create the waves. Create the waves. Kasi, kasi kaya yan, kaya yan. So, mar- maraming, maraming salamat. Maraming salamat, Sir Howie. No, napakasarap ng usapan at ang ganda na doon tayo nagwakas sa Zoom background ko. <laughs> Pero yun, no? create the waves. No? Hindi ka kailangan maging biktima ng kasaysayan. Hindi ka kailangan na ngawa ka lang ng ngawa at self-pity. No? You are empowered by history. No? You are here perhaps for a reason kung bakit ka nilagay dito ng kasaysayan. You could have been born some other time, but you are here. And this is now. And this is the world. Question is, what are you going to do about it? No? So we have to be more action-oriented. Hindi ba? Huwag tayong masyadong magpalunod sa negative emotions. Di ba? Ask ourselves, okay, this is the world. What are we going to do about it? You know, are we just gonna cry? Or are we going to you know, empower ourselves and chart the direction no for for our history no so 
Thank you very much, Sir Howie. I'm sure yung production team, kapag ka pinanood to, di nilalam anong gagawin nila kasi mahaba. So, sir, <laughs> three parts magagawin dito. Pero pala na sila. Pero sobrang nag-enjoy ako, Sir. And Thank you. Sa mga fellow peeps natin, huwag kalimutan mag-subscribe, mag-like, at mag-share ng ating Spotify at ng ating YouTube channel. no? So muli, ito po si Sir Ice kasama si Sir Horacio. Severino, <laughs> no? historian, journalist, you know, uh, environmentalist, no, and isang taong humahawak sa pag-asa sa kabilad ng kadiliman, si Sir Howie Severino. Maraming maraming salamat, Sir, at Thank you. kita kits po tayo. Ang kwentuhang filosofo with Sir Ice ay produced ni Johan Arceo, Joanna Esquivias, Ryan Anthony Racela, at Cholo Setiare. Executive produced ni GP Abrahano, Drean Deocampo, at YB West. Boses sa intro ni Jonah Pakula, at special participation ni Rene Liboro. Ang kwentuhang filosofo with Sir Ice ay isang original mula sa Pipe Network.